The time has come. We officially have our asphalt quotes and it's not looking pretty. October 24th was the day we closed on this property before we even exited the closing office. The asphalt guy was telling me he was just a few minutes away. You guys know I hate these rocks. One of these rocks got thrown into one of our Corvettes that cost me a thousand dollar windshield and I want to get rid of them ASAP. And as I have quickly found out, this is going to be in a very expensive project. In the last update video of this building, I shared with you that we need to change these doors out. It's very important. What I didn't show you is how it's kind of like cutting away down here rotting away if you will so that needs to be fixed very very quick and then also what i didn't show you was how this stuff right here is all cracked somebody physically broke into this building one time and you can even see the mark right here on the door that they pried in here or maybe even kicked the door right here to come in because look at all of this cracking right here on the door. So it's safe to say that this building is not very secure and it's not something that we didn't know. We've never kept anything of value in here. Titles aren't kept in here. Keys are locked into a safe that's not on premises. All that stuff has been preventative for us to make sure that we're done. The only thing of value in here is probably our Toys for Tots, which we have a great selection of, but you guys need to send more. Don't forget about the little kids and uh, girls. We have a lot of boys toys here and for bigger kids, but the little kids need some stuff too. I throw our address down in the description. So if you want to donate some toys for Toys or Tots, just hop on Amazon. And the only other things that would be worth value here would be maybe our $400 monitor. Not a big deal. I'll go back to Best Buy. The Keurig is not that big of a deal. The coffee that, is a big deal. No, that can, coffee is for closers. Yes, and exactly. apparently right now, Grant has got his name, his personal name on the wall almost as many times as you sold a car for this company in 11 months. He's been here for two. That's okay. So next month he gets to buy his third Am one. Am I a salesman? <laughs> and what I didn't show you was down here how it's rotting out and I had to put some deck screws in this because this piece was coming out. You can see it's kind of rotted down there. And uh, this just isn't very secure here either. And the good news about that is we do have doors on order and we have a company that's gonna put them in. They're local to us. They're just right down the street, which is awesome. I love working with local companies and the cost to put doors in and have them do all of the work. If they find anything negative behind the frames like rotted wood, they're gonna take it all out and put it all back together so it's nice and secure, $2,400. I'm very happy with that quote. This is a project that's gonna probably happen next year. Uh, we're gonna get rid of these doors and you guys kind of ridiculed me on the video that I showed this stuff about the blinds. Again, this wasn't my building, so I really didn't wanna put up blinds to enhance the value of the building. I'll talk about that maybe later in this video or a future video, but uh, we're gonna get some blinds and put over that stuff. This is not good either, because if you look here, this, this moves pretty good. It's not really secure. Uh, now back here in the garage is secure because everything's good back here. So when we have like our Ferrari uh, back there, if you can see the Ferrari, uh, we have that back there. We have a Bentley back there. So you can better believe that that is absolutely secure back there. And I don't want to get too involved with our security processes here, but uh, we do have cameras. We do have a security system and our cameras are monitored live when our alarm gets set so much that when you're a Domino's driver and you go behind our building right there to take a leak uh, at uh, eight o'clock on a Sunday in the dark. Yeah, we knew about that. So on Monday, October 24th, uh, Andy from Libs Paving was here and looked at the property and saw some issues that he thought was a problem. Uh, one being that some of our driveway, our cement that's already here has fallen and then also all of the rock. So all this number 11 rock, like this little stuff right here, this is not good stuff to pave on. You kind of want all of this back here, like this bigger aggregate right here. And then we have major drainage issues. Now I'm gonna put some uh, pictures up here on the screen. So when you look at this corner right here where Frank sets, you'll see that we have pooling water. We also have pooling water here that when we, I have that picture that I'm showing on the screen now that shows it right here, you can see that it pools water and it kind of comes back here. And then we have issues right here with water. And the biggest problem that we want to make sure of is making sure water does not get into that building. We've had some leaks with this building. I think we've got them all fixed, but one thing that I didn't think of or know about is when we put asphalt on here, water is going to move a whole lot faster. So in the quote that I'm about to show you, uh, Andy with Libs Paving uh, has told us that we need to put some catch basins in here along with some drainage pipe, which I agree with. We need to put one right there where Frank is, 
we need to put one over here and then we need to put three more going back. So our idea, I wanna put it on the screen here, is have five catch basins going all the way to the back of the property so that way water goes back there. So when we get past the parking pad for the Mustang here, you'll see that we have a big, big drop down here. So if we can get water to come down to these tracks, you can see our property line is right there. This is gonna alleviate a lot of water on the property. You can see there's plenty of drainage over there. So that way it just, it goes away and it's not on our property. And of course you guys know that these drains can't be just little itty bitty drains that we put in our front yard or in front of our driveway. If a semi truck pulls on here or a rollback or truck with trailer, they have to be strong enough to withstand the weight of that. And then most importantly, these are basically gonna be those uh, prefabbed cement things that have to go into the ground, which are very costly. And what I've also learned back here with looking at Google Earth is this property didn't always look like this. So let's hop on the computer here. I'm going to show you what it looks like right now in 2022. This overhead image of our property was taken March of 2022. And when you look at the back here, pay special attention to the tree line back here. Let's hop back to 1998, where this is just a little blurry, uh, not the HD version that we see. We can see uh, a big change here, especially with the property next door with those four outbuildings. We're going to go way back here to 1992, and you can see that there there is no building on this property whatsoever as the red dot shows where our property is and there was only three buildings but you can see that trail because this was all one property owner you can see that one trail and then back to 1985 it's a, it's a little blurry so let's hop back up here to 1998 where i'll show you so that way i can jump up to 2002 and you can see the building is built now this building was built in 1997 range the hvac system on this building uh, is from 1997 so i have to assume that that's when this building was built. So when we look at this, you can see that there's no gravel behind the building whatsoever. Let's skip ahead to 2005 because now you can look at the buildings here. There's a bunch of gravel, but you can see that there's a tree line actually behind the building and there's no gravel behind us. And you can see that there's a, a lot of land to us with those four buildings. But if you pay special attention back here by the tracks, that the tracks don't appear to be as far below the grade as as we currently are. So that's really interesting to see that. And as we go forward to 2006, you can see that there's nothing really going there. 2007, we're gonna go up to 2008. You can see that there's still nothing back there. Here's a better picture at 2010. You can see we got three of the four buildings gone. Our next door neighbor, Ron, has his home built now. Uh, but again, when you look at uh, the grade right there by the tracks right here, this is not very tall. This doesn't appear to be very tall and there's no trees there whatsoever. Notice that there's no trees. So now let's pop up to 2013 and look at all of this rock that's been brought in, right? So all of this trees that you see here are shadows are growing across the track. So I don't see a whole lot of trees there yet. Maybe a little one right here. You can see that there's a catch basin for water runoff right here. He's been building all of this stuff up over here. So again, we go to 2014, there's no gravel behind us. 2016, there's more gravel for the, the car store property, uh, less work over on this back here. You can see there's a whole lot of less stuff back here in 2014, 2013, you can kind of see it again. And then so once we get back up to 2017, where we just were, you'll see the gravel, but boom, when we hit 2018, we have a little bit more gravel. And then back to 2020, we have all of this gravel back here at the previous owner of the car store property or the previous tenant of it. So this right here poses a big problem for us uh, to throwing down asphalt. So now that you understand the lay of the land a little bit more, that brings us in to this nice big quote right here. And again, just to give you as much context as possible. So they're talking about 15,500 square feet here. We got to excavate and install 225 linear foot of 10 inch hard pipe, haul away the spoils, install five two by two frame grade box drains and backfill with stone as needed. And then final finish grade, Edge key is needed for clean tie to existing roadway. Install two inches of compacted binder asphalt and then roll it. And then install one and a half inches of compacted surface asphalt and roll it. So the grand total of this project is 
$65,400. I thought if this project was gonna be 50 grand, that would be the high end. So we're $15,400 over what I thought my high end number was. My low end number was $30,000. That certainly puts a wrench into a lot of here. That's a lot of cars we gotta sell to do that and do we have to look at it? Does it enhance the value of the building and the property by asphalting? Does it gonna help us sell more cars? And remember I mentioned the furnace earlier, 1997? Well, we have issues with that as well and I'm getting bids on replacing that anywhere from $2,500 to put a Band-Aid on it to $6,000 to $11,000 to replace the entire unit. So uh, yeah, we just got done spending 280 on this building and and it looks like we're gonna spend another 100 grand plus. Now, in talking with the owners of Libs, uh, they said that, hey, listen, if you want to go out and find somebody to do the prep work to us paving, that's fine. They're gonna put me first in line to get this paving job done because there is a grant here in the city of Georgetown that actually is gonna pay me $5,000 to enhance the beautification of the building and of the property. So I wanna be able to get that five grand because then that grant will be available to us next year and we can get another five grand for doing other things. So I wanna capitalize on these government type uh, subsidiaries that I can because if I can get 10 grand to lower my cost on projects for this building, I certainly will do so. They told me that anywhere from 65 to 75% of this quote is based off of just prepping the property for land. They told me that it's gonna take four to five days to get all the work done. So now what I think I'm gonna do is go out and find somebody who specializes in this type of work because Libs specializes in paving and not all of this ground preparation where they do have to do some ground preparation to lay asphalt, probably not this much. A couple of videos ago, I mentioned that we're selling our C7 and the only reason that we're selling the C7 seven is because I don't believe in garage trophies because that's a lot of money to set into a garage saying that I've got this. It's a depreciating asset. I can take that money and invest it into something that's going to build me money like the stock market or investments and stuff like that. But unfortunately, haters and trolls felt like they needed to call us and say, oh, you're selling it because you're going bankrupt. You got to remember that my wife and I are not taking any money out of this business. We've got a huge cash reserve for this type of project, but this does put a huge dent into the profit that we've done with this building as we're growing this over and over. So in the meantime, I think we're going to have to convince Frank to sell some feet pics on OnlyFans. Yeah.